The seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet William steam locomotive, part 78. Disconnecting the water outlets, removing the saddle tank and fitting it with mounting studs. Followed by piping the steam blower. The final job is going to be sealing the tank, but before I can do that there are one or two other things I need to do. Obviously here I'm disconnecting the water unions. First of all at one side, and then as you can see by my hands moving, at the other side. Then I remove the nuts that are on the bolts that hold the tank to the cab, and obviously I do this at both sides. The final part to remove was a temporary screw that I put in to make sure that the holes lined up with the tank on the mounting bracket. What I'm going to do is make a pair of studs, two for each side. The problem is, if I use studs, they need to have nuts on the end of them, and these nuts are in the way. I've removed the hexagon head bolts, and I'm going to replace them with countersunk bolts. But in order to use countersunk bolts, I need to countersink the holes where the bolts are going to fit. Countersinking the holes is going to cause a bit of localised mess, so the solution to this is to place a cloth underneath where I'm working to catch the swarf. I'm going to countersink the two outermost holes on the brackets at both sides, and I'm using quite a small countersink fitted into my small Bosch electric drill, which is really useful. It seems to fit into very inaccessible places. I also have a DeWalt battery-powered drill, but in this case it's too big for this particular job. This countersink drill set is very sharp, and I didn't see any need to support the bracket. In no time at all, both of the holes had a suitable countersink. And here I'm fitting the first of the countersunk bolts. All I have to do is fit nuts on the other side and tighten them up. When I seal everything into the tank, there's going to be a slight amount of waiting time. And during that time, I'll give these brackets another coat of paint. With the first bracket finished, I went round the other side and repeated the process on the other bracket. I forgot this part of the sequence at the other side. I also countersunk the holes at the top in the bracket so that the studs don't get fouled up on the sharp edges. Then I removed the hexagon bolts and nuts and countersunk the other side exactly the same as I showed in the previous sequence. You can see in this clip how convenient it is to use this smaller than usual electric power drill. All I have to do now is once again repeat the process of fitting the countersunk bolts and putting nuts on the end of them and tightening the nuts. I don't really need to use a spanner, a socket into a driver tightens the nuts perfectly. These are what I'm going to fit, they are actually cut down 2BA bolts. And here they are test fitted in position to make sure they're the right length. I'm not going to use Loctite 603 to retain these studs. Instead, I'm using 542, which is really thread sealant, but it's fine for this job. To fit the studs, I'm using the lock nut method. One nut on with another nut locked to it. Then I apply some Loctite 542. Then I just screw the stud into the hole, making sure it goes all the way to the bottom and tightens up. After fitting the stud, I just remove the lock nuts and that's one done. The stud doesn't move because I have a spanner against the inner nut to stop it from rotating. I'm showing the removal process on the other stud. And now without further ado, I'm moving to the other side to fit two more studs. Once again, it's exactly the same process. I'll speed up the sequence just so it's not too boring. It's very important to make sure that the stud tightens against the bottom of the hole. You don't want it rattling about in there. I don't normally apply quite so much Loctite 542, but I did in this case. Now it's time to fit the last stud. Is it going to go spectacularly wrong, I ask myself. But no, in this case everything went well. It's surprising though how usually the last nut or bolt that you fit has a problem, but not in this case. After fitting the studs, I immediately tried the tank in position on the engine. 
and I was very pleased to see that the studs fitted perfectly into the bracket. I enlarged them slightly to allow for any movement owing to the contraction and expansion of the tank with hot and cold. Here you can see that the studs are in position and they look good. They're just the right length and very accessible in case the tank ever needs to be removed. Not to mention the fitting process too. By using countersunk bolts to hold the angle to the bracket, there's nothing in the way to foul the nuts that will be fitted to the studs to hold everything in place. Now for something completely different, the blower pipe. I've silver soldered a union on both ends of a length of pipe. On one end of the pipe is a 1 8 BSP nut, that's for the smoke box end, and at the other end it's 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. I'm using pipe adapters at both ends because this pipe is only 3 16 of an inch in diameter, not quarter. This is only the blower pipe and it will carry more than enough steam for what it needs to do. Blow a jet of steam up the chimney to draw the fire. I need part of this pipe to be bent to the same shape as the firebox, so why not use the firebox as a template? Feeding the pipe through from the turret underneath the spectacle plate, where it meets the double union to the other pipe that I made, was quite tricky. This can only really be aligned perfectly once the engine is finally together. And as the plan is, the owner's going to take the engine and paint it, because I don't have the facility and the weather outside is terrible. It's either too cold or raining. Here you can see the general layout, the thin pipe that runs from the smoke box to the fitting near the back, near the cab, is the blower pipe. It may need some sort of support, but I think it should be okay. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.